There are four, at least four, different levels of faith towards God. There's faith of the heart, faith of the mind, our thoughts, faith of the mouth, our words, and faith of the hands, our actions. In this video, we're going to be focusing on faith that is action. Matthew chapter 9, verse 2, Yeshua saw their faith. How did he see their faith? I'm going to submit that it's probably a little bit more simple than what we might think, and maybe not quite as spiritual. Not not spiritual, just not quite as spiritual as some of us might assume. James chapter 2, verse 14, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? That word faith there, there's a few different ways to look at this, and I am going to say that James meant both of them. One way is, can faith save him? Referencing the faith of a man who says that he has faith but does not have works. Can that the way that man defines faith cannot save him. And the other way to look at this is James could be saying, can my faith, can the faith of my brethren, can the faith of my Lord save him? Faith that is action. He answers his own question here, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. We can find the same answer to the same question in Samuel. Do not fear. You have done all this wickedness, yet do not turn aside from following Yehovah, but serve Him with all your heart. And do not turn aside, for then you will go after empty things that cannot profit or deliver, for they are nothing. It pleases Yehovah to make you his people. Here it really focuses on the heart part of faith, yeah? The heart is the cradle of desire, and desire is the seed of action. And we're told here that if we turn aside, we will go after empty things. The going after is the action. We will go after empty things that cannot profit or deliver for they are nothing, reiterating here that faith without action is dead. If faith without action is dead, what is faith with action? Notice that the answer to this question is the greatest command, to serve God with everything you have. This obviously is action. If you go to a great house, and tell the man of that house that you were there to serve him, and then you only serve him in thoughts, but never in deed. You won't last very long. We must serve God with everything we have. Faith is not an outlier to the greatest commandment that any of us will ever have the honor to fulfill. So how about that age-old argument, the one that says that our works are filthy rags before him? The crux of arguments of this nature is a little pesky, and that, that argument is true. Our works are filthy rags before him. But it's only correct when talking about somebody who's trying to do good outside of serving God. Yes, this is something that's been around for a long time. And it tricks ourselves. The proper order of things is to first come to the knowledge that God exists. You have to ask Him, God, are, are you real? And trust me, if you ask Him for the right reasons and you're talking to the God of the Bible, He's going to show Himself to you. After that, you can taste and see that the Lord is good. If you taste and see that the Lord is bad, don't follow Him. 
It's not worth it. Now, once you have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, then you can lay down your life before him. Here's where the nitty-gritty takes place. There's a lot of people out there who have sacrificed their old ways to follow God's ways. Yet, they have done it for themselves. And indeed, it does benefit their life. Here's where faith comes in. God has to trust that you are going to lay down your life to take care of him. And in turn, you have to trust that he is going to take care of you. That is faith. Once you've gotten to that point in your relationship with him, you can start taking orders from him. You can start doing his works. You can do his works. You can lay down your life to receive your life. He will become the good counselor, the friend, the father that he has promised to be to those who seek him. All of that to say that if you try to enter the sheepfold by some other gate, you're going to end up being an enemy and your works will be filthy rags. However, if you enter through the door, then you are home free. Your works, no matter how good they seem or are to some people, are sowing seeds and planting the trees of the ungodly. Filthy rags before God. Even if you are doing those works with the support and friendship of thousands of people who claim to be Christian. Time and time again, Scripture teaches us that the way is narrow to life. And broad is the way to destruction. 